Welcome and thanks for joining us today. You're listening to the Women's Broadcast Television Expert Spotlight Show, and I'm your host, Shay Vaughn. WBTVN is the all women's internet television station with content that's created by women and for women. And, to jo and today, joining us here at WBTVN's Expert Spotlight is an amazing, amazing girl. Let me tell you just a little bit about her. Julie Salisbury has written a new book that's called Around the World in Seven Years. She's been a publisher for over 10 years, and she really helps other people to get their stories out there. Um, most of the stuff that she does is true stories, and they are inspiring. Help me welcome Julie to the uh, show today. Julie, hi, how are you? I'm very good, Shavon. Lovely to meet you and lovely to be here. Well, and, and lovely to have you. So tell me a little bit before we get into all these great things um, and your expertise and all of it. As a young girl growing up, what was that, you know, what inspired you and what was your childhood like? So how did you get from that to where you are today? <laughs> well, that's a great question, and it's, a, it's actually a, a long story, but I'll try and make it as short as possible. Yeah. Um, I, I actually struggled at school. Um, I, uh, I, I found out only a few years ago that I actually had dyslexia. And um, so I was not, at school was never easy for me. Um, but my father had always told me to work really hard. Um, and so I did. And so I ended up really excelling in my career. And by the end of 32, I really had everything. I was in the UK. Um, I had a fantastic career in product development. I traveled around the world. Um, and uh, yeah, it, everything was great. And, um, and then I realized, well, is this really it? You know, at the age of 32, I apparently had everything, and yet I was extremely unhappy. And so I, I did the classic uh, eat, pray, love story and uh, decided to run away. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what I did. And I ended up traveling around the world for seven years. Um, and what I was looking for was really my life purpose and to discover what I was really here for. And when I actually returned from traveling, I actually did circumnavigate. And when I returned from traveling seven years later, um, everybody kept telling me that I should write a book. And of course, I had some resistance to that, but decided, well, uh, why not? I, you know, it's something that uh, I think I could do if I, if I put my mind to uh, the problem solving of uh, trying to figure out how to put seven years into a book. And, um, and this was the result. So uh, Around the World in 70 Years was born. And as a result of actually uh, writing that book, I actually developed a process to help other people uh, write their books and share their stories. And the process that I developed, I, I since found out, was actually because of the gift of dyslexia. So you would think that a publisher, an author, and somebody who has found their passion in writing and publishing uh, would not be dyslexic. But funny enough, um, that's what I discovered a few years ago. And, um, and it actually made a lot of sense for why I'm now so passionate about what I do. Um, because really, so many people put things in their way um, to actually share their story and, and certainly to write a book. And I think I've proven that with a very simple process that I've created to make this easy, that we can all write books, we can all share our stories and inspire other people. And, um, and I've done exactly that, and I've had a very successful publishing career. Um, I've published over 100 books. Um, I've published doctors, I've published Olympians, uh, quite a few celebrities, um, and many of them have become bestsellers, and so, um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey for sure. So I'm really interested at the age when you say that you ran away. It's not like a kid that's 12 years old or even, you know, 16 that's saying that. You, you did this later on in life because you weren't happy. You probably were making money, but it wasn't, you weren't getting up in the morning and going, I can't wait to go to work or mm -hmm. I just can't, you know, life is wonderful, that kind of thing. So 
what do you think, what was it that was, I mean, I know that you were looking for your, your life purpose and, and, and all of that, but what was it that was making you so unhappy? You know, it's really interesting because um, I did a lot of travel. So I was actually, I mean, people used to say, oh, how lucky you are. You can go traveling first class around the world and you're off to Asia and you're off to New York. And But, you know, there was one particular occasion where I was in the Philippines and I just actually had, um, I was confused. I was, you know, I'd just been in Hong Kong the day before and China the day before that. And I woke up and I, I remember very clearly going to my hotel window, looking out the window and seeing these poor children. They were, the hotel was in the middle of a slum and these poor children just looked up at me and they had the biggest smiles on their faces. And I remember thinking, wow, they have so little and I have so much. And yet they have that big smile on their face and just loving life. And I'm not. So obviously there's something really big missing. And I think that was, that was it. I mean, after that, my life was never the same. And when I got back to England, I just looked at all my stuff and I looked at my husband, I looked at my million dollar house and I just thought, I don't have a smile. I don't, I'm not loving what I'm doing. And so, yeah, at the age of 32, I, I, it was just like that. Just all of a sudden, I was like, no, this is not what I'm here to do. So this you were married at that time? When you were I was married, yes. <laughs> okay, any children? No, fortunately. I, had, uh, I didn't have children, uh, but I'd only been married 10 months. <laughs> okay, so you ended up getting into a relationship that, Although you may have loved him, it wasn't really what you, what you were really seeking. And probably taking a look around and seeing all the great things that you had wasn't going to make your heart sing because you weren't where you wanted to be personally. Yeah. And you obviously were not with the person that you really wanted to be with. Yes, I think we just very, uh, you know, it's very easy for us to um, keep running really, really fast, thinking that we're, you know, looking for the perfect house and looking for the perfect husband and looking for the perfect job, you know, with the perfect money. And, and I think that, you know, eventually when we get there, we suddenly go, okay, I'm here. I've got everything I dreamed of. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, that, that's where I got to. I was like, well, I did everything I was supposed to do, and I don't, I'm not happy. So you didn't tell him or anybody that you were going to be leaving. You just left. Well, no, I did tell. I, I told everybody, and oh, everybody okay. thought I was crazy. I mean, literally, I'd just come back from a business trip, and, you know, I just, I turned around to my husband, and I said, you know, I decided whilst I'm away, this is not my life. Um, I need to, I need to leave. And he was like, Oh, you know, just, just go take a break. You need a holiday. You're working too hard. Go get it out your system. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is, I'm not going to get this out of my system. And I told my, my family and obviously my job and, uh, yeah. And within six months I left. Okay. So, okay. So within six months and you warned everybody, did you have a plan where you were going? I had no idea. The only, the only thing I knew was that I was going to start in South Africa because it just made sense at the time. You know, England is relatively close to Africa um, and uh, it's, it's very cheap there. It's easy to travel. Uh, I always dreamed of, you know, visiting the animals. And so to me, it was just like, that's a good place to start. But I had no idea that I was going to travel for seven years and I had no idea that I was going to circumnavigate. None whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so uh, you went by yourself, obviously. I started by myself, um, but then I met a friend and we actually uh, ended up buying a sailboat together. So I decided that a good way of traveling was to actually sail because then you kind of take your home with you. And so that's what I ended up doing. So you bought the sailboat? Mm-hmm. Okay, and was this uh, with a male, female, or I mean, not that it makes any difference? I, it, was, it was a male, and um, he was a friend who had also been traveling. So he had the experience of sailing, whereas I had no experience sailing. So I had said, you know what, I've got the money, I'll buy the boat, you be the skipper. Okay, 
And so he traveled with you for several years. Yes, yes, until we got to Thailand. Um, and then when, uh, when I got to Thailand, we went our separate ways. He wanted to continue uh, sailing, but I wanted to go overland. I wanted to experience uh, travel overland. And so I ended up um, you know, doing Thailand and Malaysia and Laos and Cambodia, um, backpacking by myself. So did you end up just selling the boat or giving it to him or what did you do? Well, I guess in a way it was almost that I gave it to him. Uh, we did come to us an agreement uh, by the time I got into Canada because by that time I'd completely ran out of money. And so he gave me like a small settlement. Um, but uh, yeah, that was kind of it. It was, um, yeah, it was just, you know, it was just a convenience at the time and it was a good way to travel. That was a cheap way of traveling. Uh-huh. Well, it sounds like it was a, a great venture. <laughs> a great story, you know, to tell. So you're not surprised at anything that your clients tell you about their stories because uh, you had experienced all this. You know, the other thing I want to come back on, dyslexia, um, a lot of people are, uh, don't know that they have it when they do. Mm -hmm. And the, I think that the, um, the tragedy of that uh, is that they seem to think that they, they just learn in a different way because I'm dyslexic. Right. I, I didn't even know what the word, I couldn't even spell the word. I <laughs> pronounce it. But I think that so many times it's kind of like, you know, oh, the, they're just not trying hard enough. You know, they're okay. just not trying hard enough. And the truth of the matter is you're trying harder than anybody else. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But you don't want anybody to know that. It's a terrible secret that needs to be, that's being kept because you feel ashamed. Yes. You don't know why you're, you know, why you're struggling with certain things that just come so easy to everybody else. Well, the interesting thing is it was actually my father. Uh, he was highly dyslexic and um, he just didn't want us to know. He thought that we would be really disadvantaged if we knew that we, you know, that he was dyslexic. And so that's why whenever we struggled in, in school, he would just say, work harder, work harder, work harder. I got it. And so he that's knew how hard it was. And so he just wanted you to do yeah what what was what was his business and what did he do julie um he was um an engineer he was actually a maintenance engineer for a uh, holiday inn and so he was actually um you know it was again using those kind of skills of dyslexia which is which is certainly um you know uh engineers are very good if they have dyslexia because you can use your hands you can visualize problems you're very good at problem solving um, and yeah, he just didn't want us, uh, the girls to know. And in fact, it was only when I found out I was dyslexic, I mean, literally three years ago, because an author was working on the, on a book. And, uh, and she said to me, you know, this, your dad, your, your mom or dad probably have dyslexia. And I said, oh, no, they don't. They would have said. And, um, and, she, and I, went to, I went and asked my dad and I said, you know, dad, did, did, did you have dyslexia or did you struggle at school? And he said, um, no, 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 no. And I said, why? Why are you asking? And I, well, because I just found out that I'm dyslexic. And then he told me the whole story. And he okay. told me that, yes, when he married my mom, that he didn't, he could not read and write and that he was so afraid that the daughters would, would have dyslexia that he just kept it a secret from everybody. And, um, and every time we said, oh, school's so hard. Why is it so easy for my friends? He would just say, you've just got to work hard. You've just got to work hard, work harder. And so that's what we all did. We just worked harder. And like I say, I, I, I'm grateful for that because I don't know if I knew I was dyslexic, would I have become a publisher? Would I have written a book? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I knew I was challenged by these things, but uh, if, I, if I knew that label, would I have done the things I did? I'm, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, labels, you know, are, can be uh, disturbing from the standpoint as they do hold you back. What the truth of the matter is, we just find a different way that we um, go about things. And it has nothing to do with IQ. It has nothing to do with any of those things. And most people don't realize that. And we keep company with great people. Lots, oh, yes. lots of um, movie stars, lots of, um, I think even Einstein. Yes, uh, was, yes. Was Richard Branson. 
Yeah, exactly. Lot and and uh, presidents, um, yes. amazingly. And everybody, it's like anything else. It, the, the degree of what it is certainly mm -hmm. makes a difference too. But we just navigate differently about it, and and we find what we're really good at. Like I can solve things really, you know, solve problems, and I can. I, I want to almost finish somebody's sentence because I know what they're going to say, you know, ahead exactly. of time. Yeah. It has, like I said, it has nothing to do with it, with uh, intelligence at all. It just has uh, uh, a structure to it that makes it difficult for you in certain things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you know, some people can even have it, and the only way that they're affected is uh, really through directions, like yes. getting from one place to the next place. Yes. And, the, and you know, I would, my husband would say to it, we've been here a hundred times. Why don't you know how to get here? <laughs> I, know, I know that. I, that I know that well. Right, exactly. And I would say, if I had that answer, I'd tell you, but I didn't know. Yes, yes. You know, you know interestingly enough, um, I, I mean, I just started doing a bit of research because I'm actually doing a TED talk on the subject of the gift of dyslexia. And so I found all these really in interesting facts, like, uh, for example, 50% uh, of NASA employees are dyslexic. Yeah. Uh, and nearly all architects are dyslexic because yeah. the the gift is really um, being able to look. Our brains basically function in a different way. They sure uh, do. And so I we're know that all the time. <laughs> right, exactly. We're great at problem solving, and I mean, and, and this is why I realized um, that when I created the Inspire Book program to help people write books, it was actually because of this gift. Because I was able to put together a very simple process that gets rid of all the complexity. And, and that's really one of the gifts of dyslexia is that we can see through all the clutter. So we're very good at problem solving because we can look at complex situations. And in my case, often complex life stories. And I'm able to like look at all of the story and say, okay, we need this piece and this piece and this is how it comes together. When I get my clients to mind map, they just come to me with, with what looks like chaos to them. You know, they just say, well, this is chaos. How can you possibly sort this out to turn it into a book? And I say to them, well, to me, this is easy. You know, this is my gift. This is what I do. Yeah. And, um, and this is why I don't believe there's anybody else that's come up with a process uh, like the Inspire Book process because, you know, there's nobody that comes at writing a book in the way that I come at writing a book because of the gift of dyslexia. And I, I mean, literally, I've had people come to me and they say, I have no idea where to start with my book. My story is huge. It's big. I just, I, I don't know where to start. And I take them from that idea to a complete, to a public written and published book within 16 weeks because it's simple. It's just a very simple process and we make fun out of it. You know, and it's actually people just love the process. And I, you know, I, I think everybody should write books. And I think it's because, because I'm dyslexic, not despite I'm dyslexic, but because exactly. I'm dyslexic, we, I can help people. We embrace it because it has given us certain t uh, uh, tools that other people don't have. I'm looking at that pillow behind you, Life is a Story, and that's really what your whole life is about, is helping people with their stories and telling your story. Yes, yes, and, yes. And it's finding the purpose in the story as well, right? Because I think when we, when we come to a place of wanting to write a book, it's important for us to understand, well, what, why, why would anybody care? You know, what's, what's in it for them? And so understanding that, yes, you have a gift in your story. You have gifts for other people in your story. And so I help you really pull out the purpose of your story. It's back to that purpose thing that I started again, you know, when I was 32, when I said, well, hey, I want to know what my purpose is. And it's because I wanted to understand, you know, what, what, why did I go into product management? Why, why did I have to work so hard at school? And when you actually put all those pieces together, now it makes this beautiful story where you can say, oh, now I get the purpose. Now I understand how I can actually help other people 
because of my story. So that's really what I do to help people. I don't just, you know, it's not about just doing this, writing a book. It's really about understanding the purpose of your story and then how can you help other people by sharing your story. And that's really what I do. Yeah, well, you do that every, every day. And I think that that's um, amazing. Um, if you had um, some words of wisdom, what would those be to the audience uh, that have been thinking about maybe writing a book, but really don't think that they, like you said, know how to go about it or whatever? Um, what would be your, what's your, what would be your, your uh, what would you have to say to them? Well, I think the first thing I would say is don't try it alone. <laughs> you know, we all need, we all need coaches. We all need uh, help. We all need to collaborate. And I think it's a complete mistake that we think that the way to, to capture a story is to escape to a beach hut somewhere or, you know, a, a writing uh, place in the middle of a forest and be all by yourself. I don't believe that's the case at all. I think it needs to be a collaborative process because there's a lot involved. We get very much involved in our own story and then we're stuck in our story and we can't see, you know, the wood for the trees. And so make sure you get some help, like get some help doing that and then make it an enjoyable experience because you can actually share it. Um, I, I have over 100 authors in my community that have published their books um, as much as six or seven years ago, and they're still in the community mentoring and helping other people that are now sharing their stories. So we create this big collaborative community where actually it's not a lonely experience at all. We're all in this together as a community to help one another and support one another. And that makes the whole book writing process so much more fun, believe me. Yeah, no, I, I, can, I can see that. I, I, I want to come down and do my my third book with you because I just want to have that community and have fun with it. Um, you know, one of the things that I think is important too is that sometimes people have things in the background, which is a big part of what their story is all about. And yet it's, they haven't brought it out of the closet. I'll just say, mm -hmm. and, they don't, and they're fearful about talking about it because they don't want anybody to know that as a child, maybe they were molested mm -hmm. and it's been something they've been bearing for a long time. And, and basically um, carrying it with them for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, um, that's why I think that it is so important to work with someone like yourself. Mm -hmm. so that you can ask all the questions. You're going to get there at some point in time because you got to know what the basis of the story is. Yes. Well, and you have to be willing to be vulnerable to help other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've dealt, I, I, I've worked with a lot of authors through that have experienced sexual abuse. I've worked with authors that have experienced a lot of trauma. Uh, you know, I've worked with authors that, you know, have gone through the journey of cancer, um, that are autistic, that have traveled the world in a wheelchair, you know, uh, that um, their husbands have died of ALS. You know, I've worked with so many people. Um, and, and actually, the, the thing I always say to them is, Think about how your story is going to help that next person that's going to go through exactly the same experience as you. And I, I remember Nadine, just a beautiful woman, her, her husband was dying of ALS, and I encouraged her to put a picture of her and her husband on the front cover, and I said, this is your legacy to him. You know, you, you will always remember him. Everybody will always remember him and be inspired. And you know the really beautiful thing is, she became a best-selling author and a gentleman went into a bookstore, found her book and then found Nadine and said, you know, I lost my wife and this book really helped me to see that I could be strong. And those two are now together as a couple. How beautiful is that? It is beautiful because you have immediately something that you can share together. And it doesn't mean that because you come together as a couple that you have, you know, dismissed the beauty of the relationship that mm -hmm. you, you know, that you're, you're coming from, because that is always with inside you, always, always within your heart. Yes. It isn't that one is better than the other. It's just that it's a time and a place. Yes. And it's the embracing of where you are at that point in time and to take those great memories along with you. Mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not leave them back and make, you know, make good 
um, memories with whomever it is that you're with at that point in time because you still have a lot to do here on, on earth, right? I know. And sharing our stories, you know, when you're willing to be vulnerable and share those vulnerable icky pieces, you know, it's very, um, it's very healing. It's very healing for you as a writer to actually lay all that trauma out on, you know, on the, in the book instead of like, you know, having that trauma stuck inside of your body where it's very, very dangerous. Absolutely. And so it's a healing process writing, but then it's really healing that you can actually heal other people and inspire other people through your story. And they can see a way through their story and it gives people other, you know, other people courage. So, you know, sometimes if my authors get to a point where they just, you know, they say, no, I can't go there. I'm, I, I can't be that vulnerable. I say to them, don't do it for you, do it for your readers. Do it for those people that you inspire with your story. And that gives them the courage to do that then. It gives them the courage to share their story. And um, it's, it's I, I'm, I feel like I'm so on purpose with what I'm doing because every single day I hear the most amazing stories, people that are willing to be vulnerable, people that are willing to share their stories. And I have to tell you that, you know, that's why I'm now here talking about dyslexia. You know, um, I think even a year ago, I wouldn't have had the courage to say to people, I'm a dyslexic publisher. I wouldn't have had the courage to do that. So, you know, I think that that is, they've inspired me to, to be vulnerable and share my story as well. And, and I have to share, I had to come to that realization uh, too. And um, it was like, oh no, you know, people are gonna think I'm stupid or I'm dumb or I'm, you know, whatever, all the things that we, we start to put those names on ourselves, mm -hmm. not people that are doing that because they know better than that. Yes. Um, and the other thing is, it's really funny, people that have dyslexia have an extremely high comprehension ability. Yes. And usually when people have struggling with um, reading or any of those things, comprehension doesn't you know, really exist. But people who have dyslexia with that, are highly comprehension and they can three or four words they're going to tell you the story you know um, it's, it's a different way of using your brain yeah. and uh, you know I, I found out recently that 40% uh, of self-made uh, billionaires are actually dyslexic oh yeah and it's because of the um, problem-solving the innovation you know people like Steve Jobs you know, they don't look at, at um, problems, they look at opportunities and they, and they take on the challenge and say, you know, I can, I can look at all this complexity and chaos and I can find a way to simplify this. I can find a way through all of this. Right. And that, that is the gift of dyslexia, it absolutely is. And um, yeah, and I, and I am very proud to say that I'm a dyslexic publisher now. I'm, you know, I'm really <laughs> proud to say that. <laughs> Well, I, I love it. And I think that there's just a lot of misunderstanding about it. And people like yourself that is, you know, standing up to the plate and, 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 and embracing the fact of who you are, regardless of what that may be, mm -hmm. and turning, you know, lemons into lemonade, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's what you've been doing and helping other people to do the same thing because of who you are as an individual. God made us who we are. So yes. we embrace every little, you know, little challenge that we that we think that we have and turn it into that pearl. So mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Julie. If there's anything else that you would like to say to the audience, please do so. Okay, well, if you if you have a story you want to share and you want to kind of get on that path and you want to join our community, um, then you can go to inspireabook.com and we actually have lots of videos and, and tips and uh, and you can also just go onto our Facebook page, Inspire a Book. It's all one word. Uh, it's all about inspiring people to, to write and publish books. And, um, and just join the community. Um, even if you say, you know what, I'm not ready for a book yet, um, then just follow us and follow the inspiration and follow our stories. Um, and I think you're probably going to get to that point where you will have the courage to share, share your own story and you'll want to do that. So, uh, yeah, come join the influence family. That's what I always say. <laughs> I love it. And I think what's important is that you can actually help them without them being 
um, there with you. You can do like we're doing. You can videotape something or you can mm -hmm. you know, Skype them or whatever. And you feel like, you know, that you can talk and, and um, you can really, you know, get to know each other really well. Oh, technology is amazing. I mean, I have them. Um... I have a 16 week webinar program. I told you that we can go from idea to publish book in 16 weeks. So I we actually have a program. Uh, it starts again in November and, and it's all done on webinar. It's all done on zoom. Exactly. This platform, yeah. and, uh, you know, we come together as a, as a great group of people to collaborate and yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Well, I have really enjoyed having you on as our guest. And I want to thank our audience for joining us today um, here at WBTVN Expert Spotlight Show. And if for any small reason or big reason that you would like to uh, be a host and an expert on whatever subject it is that you do, uh, then go to WBTVN.TV, fill out the form, and we will uh, contact you. Um, until the next time, Julie, thank you so much. And until the next time, we'll see you again. Take care. Thank you.